to be great, you have to be an athlete. And a true athlete is somebody that competes. And he competes every single day. He does, it's who he is. He's a competitor. It defines who he is. And there's nothing you can do to change it. Every day, every second that goes by, he understands it's an opportunity to get better. And he wants to go against the best. And he wants to push himself to the limits and beyond because that's all he knows. And that's what he loves to do. He's a true, you know, he's, he has a true passion for the game. And that means everything that entails it. You have to perfect your, your art. And you have to, you have to love the train. You have to love two-a-days and practice. And you have to have this, this love about just putting your body through as much pain as possible because you know at the end you're going to be better. In order to train athletes, you kind of have had to bend one yourself. You have to understand mentally what it is to be a competitor. You have to love to compete yourself in order to push someone that loves to compete. Speed kills. Speed wins football games. You look at the top programs across the country and they're all fast. They're real fast. In order to gain speed, you basically need to concentrate on four, four basic principles. Number one, you have to be flexible. Your hips, your hamstrings, your body, it has to be able to, to go through the full range of motions in order, in order to utilize all your power. Number two is technique. You got to teach your body how to run. The proper leg cycle, bringing your knee up, creating space between your foot and the ground, and able to utilize your power. And that's the number third one is power. You have to be powerful. You take hand cleans, power cleans, bands, whatnot, to develop hip power, get full extension of the hips. You have to be technically sound in that in order to gain, gain power in your hips to utilize when you run. And the fourth thing you have to do is stay consistent at it. Gaining speed is an ongoing process. You have, to, you have to work at it day in and day out to change your body and perfect and get that muscle memory in order to run so you don't have to think about it in a game. And those are the four things you need to do to gain speed. The lifting portion of a program is going to change through the course of the year. It just depends on what stage we're in. But the overall basis of it remains the same. Number one, we're going to train you mentally to be tough. We got to train you that on the, you know, you're just you're going just as hard the last play as you are the first play. And you're just as strong, you're just as powerful, and you know, the energy level is still high. And you, you're at the end of the game, you're still going 100%. You're still a top athlete. You're going to outlast the other team. That's, the, you know, that, that's football, and that's first and foremost. We're going to put the size on you. We're going to put the, the explosion and power in your hips and your body. We're going to work on hamstring strength. Not only just moving slow, you get a lot of programs that they're just concentrating on strengthening it. But a hamstring, when you run and your foot strikes the ground with all that hip power, it catches like this. It doesn't catch like this. So you have to condition your hamstring to catch like this so you don't pull your hamstring. So the exercises we do are geared more towards that. We're going to work powerful. We're going to put as much size and mass on you as possible, but we're going to teach you to use it powerful and explosively. So if you get an athlete that was 200 pounds before he started and now he's 220 at the end of the program and he was vertical jumping 38, 40 inches, he needs to maintain that power. He needs to still jump 38, 40 inches. And if he's able to do that at a higher weight, a body weight, he's actually gotten more powerful. Now he can play in a heavier weight just as explosive and as powerful. So he's throwing more weight around. It's going to make him an overall better player. And that, that's the trick. Because in football, I don't care what anyone tells you, you have to be big to play football. You want to be as big as you possibly can, but still able to move as efficiently, powerful, and, and overall speed-wise as you can. That's the, you know, that, that's the trick. You got to take every different type of uh, training program and combine it into one. You know, you're not just a power lifter. You can't just do Olympic lifts. You're not just a bodybuilder. You can't just do hypertrophy and try to get size. You know, you, you, you're not just a track athlete. You don't run in a straight line. So everything we do in the weight room has got to make you an overall better athlete. The thing that we do that's going to make us a championship team in the weight room is our mental toughness, our mental outlook. Mentally, at the end of the workout, you have to be just as sharp and focused and technically sound at everything as you are at the very beginning when you, when you, when you haven't done anything. So it's, it's, it's teaching you through the list and everything else to be, number one, technically sound, but number two, to still have that passion and that drive to go at the very end. You know, we also do a supplementary workout in the hour. We're going to take each athlete and figure out what's wrong with them. 
you have bad hamstrings, his hips inflexible, he's got ankle problems, shoulder problems, doesn't matter what it is. And they're going to have a supplementary workout that's, that's geared and aimed towards fixing those problems. Because if you get hurt, it doesn't matter how great you became in the offseason athletically, if you're hurt, you can't play. You're sitting on the sideline, you're doing no one any good, and now you're hurting the team from winning a national championship game. So we got to keep you on the field. So we incorporate all this stuff. If you look at an hour of, of our workouts in the weight room, we do a lot of exercise and a lot of lifts. We're constantly going. There is no idle time. There is no standing around. There is no walking around. You're constantly moving through the entire hour. Probably about 80 to 85 percent of the kids, the first day of the first couple of workouts, you know, they're puking. Their body's never done this before. They're taxed and mentally, they're you know, you can tell they're not there. And that's what we got to fix. That's what we're going to train. So at the end of the eight, nine months, whatever it is, going into the season, your body's in shape. It's conditioned. It's as big as it can be. It's as explosive as it can be. It's flexible. It's powerful. It's fast. It's agile, mobile, hostile. Everything all wrapped into one to produce one heck of an athlete and one heck of a team. And, you know, that's our main goal in the, in the, in the weight room. It's, the weight room is a facilitator to the movement. Everything we do in the weight room, all the lifts, are pretty much what they do across the country. We, you know, we might do things a little differently. Every program does. But, you know, the goal is all the same. It's to produce a national championship team, the best possible athletes in the country. That's the goal. You know, if you work hard and you bust your butt, you get 60 to 80 guys doing the same thing nonstop in and out, at the end of the program, you're going to have a team that's unified and is driven through one mission. And they only want one thing, and that's a ring and a national championship. You know, as a former football player, I'm a competitor, and I still compete. That's why I work out with these athletes. But I'm trying to show them what it is to be a competitor, what it is to work hard, how, how mentally and focused you have to be to change your body and change your technique and what you need to put into the weight room in the offseason, how you need to eat, how you need to, you know, mentally, where are you? I don't do it to beat you so I can feel like I'm still an athlete and I can say, yeah, I can still do it. I do it to push you. Honestly, I want you to beat me. I want you to win. I want you to outlast me. If you're doing that, that means you fully understand and I related to you and I got you to understand what I need you to do to be an athlete. How focused you have to be and how dedicated you have to be and what kind of want to, you know, want to work, want to win, want to compete, want to drive, want to push yourself. That's why I do it. And these kids, you know, the true athletes, they understand that this is their time. That they have four to five years to do everything they possibly can to become the best athlete they are, to reach their goals no matter what it is. This is their time. There is no second chance. And once it's gone, it is gone. And they're going to embrace every minute and every second and every workout with that mentality. I'm here to get better today. I'm here to achieve my goals. I'm here to be great. I'm not here just to go through the motions and be another number on the team. I'm here to be an athlete. I'm going to compete, and I'm going to do everything I can to put myself in the position to achieve greatness. You have to have that mentality about you. If you don't, you're not an athlete. It's, it's, those, it's those players and those kids with that mentality is what I look for in an athlete. Because if you have that will, and you have, you're an, you have athleticism, and you have skill, but if you have that will, I can do amazing things with you. I can turn you, I can point you in the right directions. I can give you the best training and put your body and your mind in the position to achieve everything you want. But that's a 